Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use Firebase authentication in our Flutter web applications along with Google sign-in. So fairly straightforward to do and uh, you'll see there's only a slight difference between the mobile implementation and the web. But for this video, we will only be looking at the web implementation. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to head on over to Firebase or console.firebase.google and then select your project or create one if you haven't. And I've already made this Flutter web demo and uh, I've not added anything to this, but you can see that we have the option to add a iOS app, Android or web and also Unity. So we want to do web. So we're just gonna hit that. So I'm gonna say this is Flutter web demo and then we can register the app. And then after that, you will see that we get um, the configs that we need to include. So they say that this needs to be added to the bottom of your body tag. So this is the file or this is the configuration that we will add to our index.html. So I've already created a default Flutter application. Nothing special is going on. It is just a material app with uh, these components. And then in the web folder, if we go to our index.html, then in the bottom of our body tag. But take note that they also say it needs to be at the bottom, but before you actually use the Firebase components. So um, it just needs to be on top of where we add the script. And yeah, just as a quick explanation, this is the configuration. So here we have the configuration that is associated to the uh, project or the app that I just made. And in the JavaScript, we call initialize app on the Firebase um, instance. And then we just pass in the configuration and then some default stuff for Firebase analytics as well. But that's technically not needed. And then you will see that we are also um, including a couple of script files. So the Firebase app, so they say that the core Firebase SDK is always required and then Firebase Analytics. So again, this is just because I enabled analytics for the project, but if you didn't do that, then you won't see this um, or you won't need this at all. And the thing to take note here is that we need to add additional Firebase products um, as we use them. So for example, if we're gonna be using Firebase Auth, as we will be in this video, then we need to include that as well. And the same if you want to use Firebase um, Firestore or the Firebase database. So you can see that they provide this link and that shows the available Firebase products. So let's just follow that link. And then you can see that we have these drop downs, so available libraries, and then we have a CDN, so content delivery network, and from hosting URLs. So if we were to do Firebase hosting, then um, we would actually be able to import these scripts from our host URL. In the future, I might make a video regarding this, so let me know if you are interested in that. And then um, we, we are gonna use a content delivery network, so CDN. And then you can see these are all the products. So yeah, we want to use authentication. So I'm just gonna copy that. And then we can add it over here. And then from the Firebase authentication side, we are good to go. In the uh, Google sign-in, we are gonna add a couple of extra stuff later on in the video. But for now, that is all we need. So next up, we are gonna go to our public, um, if I can do it correctly, and we're gonna add a couple of dependencies. And to add the dependencies, I'm actually not just gonna type them in manually. I'm gonna make use of this extension, and the extension is called uh, public assist. Yeah, so this extension, public assist, and this allows you to basically just search for available packages on the pub store and it gets the latest version. So in you don't need to be in the pubsec file. I'm just doing this to demonstrate. But if you type in add in the command palette, uh, so in Visual Studio Code, if you do control shift P, it brings up the command palette, then I'm just gonna search for the uh, add update dependency. And the first dependency we will add is Firebase. So this will do a search and show all of the pa packages that have Firebase in the name. So we want Firebase off. And in, you can actually now see uh, it's imported or it's added as a dependency, Firebase off. And then the same way we're gonna do Google sign-in. 
So there we go, Google sign in. And then we will also make use of provider in this video. So um, the use of provider is not at all important for what this video is trying to show. It's just the preferred way that I like to inject my dependencies and handle states. You'll see that after you've updated your pubsec.yaml file, um, it will also generate this file. So this is used by Firebase. So yeah, we don't need to touch that. And then I'm just gonna quickly create a little bit of a structure for this project. So this is how I do it. Uh, you can obviously do it in whatever way you want to. So yeah, my UI folders, just UI and app is apps, uh, app logic. So models and services and um, stuff like that. So let's add a folder called models and add a folder called services. So the services will be the authentication service in this video. Okay, so I just fast forwarded a little bit and added all of the logic associated to the authentication service. So um, you can see that I'm importing this file called user.dart, which we haven't yet created. So in our models, we will add a user.dart and I'll explain the service in a moment. And then I just added this user class. So nothing special. You can technically make this however you want to. And you will see that in the Firebase auth service, there are a couple of these functions. So the ones that we will be using in this video and we have sign in anonymously. So this is signing in anonymously with Firebase. And if you are interested in the code, you can take a look at this in the uh, GitHub project. And then yeah, sign in with Google, which we will come to later and then sign out and then also getting the current user. And you can see that all of these are calling functions on the Firebase of um, uh, object over here. And this is a object that is created in the constructor. So in the constructor, you can either inject an instance and if it's zero, uh, not zero, if it's null, then we just initialize it by calling Firebase off dot instance. And yeah, doing it like this allows you to inject a mock Firebase off instance to do testing as an example. And uh, if you don't inject it, then yeah, you just create a default instance. And then there's this private uh, method called user from Firebase. So one thing to note is that all of these methods, for example, sign in anonymously returns an off result. And on the off result, you can um, get a user. And this user is of uh, type Firebase user. And if we take a look at that, uh, this Firebase user class, this gives us all of the information associated to the user that is stored on Firebase. So you can just use this Firebase user um, object. Um, and sometimes I do that. But um, if you don't need all of that information, you can also just map it to be a new, uh, a new object. So this is what we're doing here. We're just mapping it to um, return a user and we are creating this user based on the Firebase user that we get. So in all of these sign in uh, functions, we are just calling the use from Firebase, as you can see. If you're interested in this, take a look at the code. We are more concerned about the web implementation for all of this. So okay, now that we have the service and we have our user model, that is all that we need from a app logic side, I guess. Um, now we just need a way to inject it into our application. So there are a 101 ways that you can do this. I'm, I'm gonna be using provider, as I said. So I'm just gonna wrap this in a new widget and I'm gonna create a multi provider. And if you're not familiar with provider, um, then there are very good resources for that. And I'm also planning on making a video about provider in the future. So um, subscribe if you haven't, uh, stay on the lookout for that video. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be using a multi-provider and in the multi-provider, we can give providers. So this is where we will basically instantiate the service class. And this is also how we will expose the user object. So this is a neat way that you can use provider to um, automatically make changes. Uh, or you, well, it, I'm, I'm going ahead of myself. I'll just show you in the code. So for the provider, um, we are gonna create a list of providers and the first one will just be a normal provider. And then we'll call create on that. And this gets a object that we don't need. And then we will return 
the Firebase Auth instance, or we will create it at least. Uh, not the instance, the service, sorry. And then um, below this provider, if you're wondering why I'm moving my head like this, it's because the microphone is in front of my keyboard. <laughs> so it's, I cannot see my keys. Uh, I guess if I was a better typer, then I do not need to see the keys. But uh, never mind. So we are going to use a change note. No, I'm lying. We're going to use a stream provider. And this will become clear in a moment. And I will give you an overview of exactly what these different providers do uh, in a moment. So for this uh, stream provider, we actually do want to use the context. And the reason for that is because we want to use the context to get a reference to this Firebase auth service that we've already um, created and that's injected with provider. So in provider 4.1, you can use the new extension methods. So instead of saying provider dot of and then giving the type of the class and then saying listen false or whatever, now you can actually um, do the following. You can say context dot read, context dot watch, or context dot select. Yeah. So all of them do something differently, or do something different. We want to do read. So read as that it does a once-off read but doesn't listen to changes it doesn't watch for the, the changes watch watches and select is more fine-grained control so if it's um, a bigger class and you only want to listen to part of the class changing or the model changing then you can use select so yeah we want to use read and then we need to provide the type that we want to read so this is the firebase of service and then all we need to do now is we need to say on off state changed. So the on off state changed is a method uh, that is on our Firebase off service. And as you can see, it uses the Firebase off instance and then on off state changed. So every time the uh, Firebase detects an authentication change, so for example, if a user logs in or, or if a user logs out or if it's a different user, then we will update the stream of users to inject a new user on the stream. Um, I shouldn't say inject to, I guess, to add a new user on the stream. And then, yeah, we're just mapping it to return a user. So using this function. So now if we jump back to where we create the providers, um, this might make a little bit more sense. So now we have the stream provider that we can call anywhere in our application and we will get the stream of user so we t we can uh, define that this should be a, a user stream but uh, we don't need to if i can type that we don't need to do that it it infers it's because we are returning a a stream of user so it's unnecessary or not necessary to put it there and if you are familiar with provider you might know that you get something called a proxy provider and a proxy provider actually does exactly what I just did. It listens to a previous provider and every time that provider changes, it updates this specific provider. However, there is not a provider for injecting or there's not a proxy provider for stream provider, if that made sense. Uh, you get a normal proxy provider and you get a proxy, when you get a change notify proxy provider, but you do not get a stream proxy provider. So that is why uh, using I'm using this little it's not a hack I mean it's it's recommended by the author of the package um, but yeah this is why we're using the context to read the Firebase auth service and yeah the thing to take take notes of now is that we can use this Firebase auth service anywhere in our app and we can also use the uh, user that we are injecting and the reason that we're doing this above my app is because we want this to be available globally. So um, no matter where we are in the widget tree, we want this to be accessible. I'm not gonna go into any more detail on how I'm using provider because that's not the purpose of this video. If that's something you are interested in, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll make a dedicated video showing you a little bit more about my architecture as well as how I use provider. And I also want to make a dedicated video on provider, to be honest. 
um, one that covers as much as I know. But yeah, that's not necessary for this video. All you need to know is we are injecting uh, a user and we are injecting the Firebase off service, and now we can access it in our application. Okay, and then next up, we want to add a consumer. So a consumer is an opposite of a provider, and we are gonna listen on the user. So this is this consumer will now be called every time the stream provider updates a new user. So then we need to give it a builder, and the builder gets a context that I don't believe we will use. And then it gets the user and it gets a child. And then um, we also are not gonna be using the child. I'm just gonna double quote that or double underscore. And then we also need to import the user. And then now for this consumer, we will return. Actually, no, we're gonna do a check to see if the user is null then we will return a uh, text that says not signed in. Uh, I'm just gonna say not signed in. And if it isn't null, then we will return a text that says signed in. And just a format issue, uh, okay. And now if we run our application, it should be fine. Well, I'm saying it should be fine, but we'll see. Okay, so it appears to be working, or at least it's, it's saying we're not signed in. So that is what we expected. Okay, I've skipped ahead and I've added a couple of views and I will go into them in a moment. Um, one thing that I also want to do is just for, uh, again, cleanliness, I'm just going to move the app file or the app widget to a new uh, file. So I'm just going to create app.dart in our app folder. And yeah, the reason that I do that is because I really like it to keep the main.dart file as clean as possible. And I'm just going to delete the test file. And then in main.dart, now we can just import app.dart and uh, let's get our commas in the correct place okay so normally what i also do is uh, for these injections i do that in a separate builder um but we're not going to do that for now and uh okay so if we run this we should see that there's a slight difference and I'm lying, there will actually not be a difference because I haven't done it yet. So in the, uh, in the consumer now, instead of returning this text, when we're not signed in, then we want to return the sign in view. So there we go. And if we are signed in, then we can return the home view. And these are just widgets that I made. So let's hit run and then we will see some visual differences. Okay, and there we go. So now you, um, we're not signed in, so we're getting the sign in view, which says please sign in, and then there's two optional buttons. And the sign in with Google will not work, and I will show you that, that in a moment. Uh, I do believe, unless anything went wrong, anonymous sign in should work. So uh, let's hit enter. And uh, yeah, as I hit enter, I just realized it will not work. and the reason it won't work is because uh, it's not yet enabled. Um, so if we um, continue to our Firebase console, in the authentication section, what you need to do, and this is very important, is you need to specify what sign-in methods you need to use. So actually as a, oh, I closed it already, uh, normally it's an error that says uh, it's not, like if you look at your um, JavaScript console or the console in Chrome, you will see the error indicates that this is what you need to do. Uh, yeah, so over here, we're going to say allow anonymous sign in. And then later on, we will come back and do the same for the Google sign in. So anonymous sign in is enabled. And I'm just going to rebuild this. And uh, let's bring up the console and see if there are any errors this time. Anonymous sign in. Okay and it works. 
So now we are at the home page and then we can just hit the sign out button and it signs us out. So uh, just as a quick explanation, in the UI folder, uh, there's this view called uh, sign in view. So under authentication, normally you would have a registration view as well. And then in the sign in view, I'm injecting the sign in view model. So this just uses, again, it uses provider and uh, just to manage the states uh, in a little bit uh, better way. This is not necessary. You could have, uh, I could have done the exact same just using set state. Um, but again, this is not important for the video. Um, and then in the actual um, buttons, you can see that we are returning a sign-in buttons or this column that sign-in buttons. So we have anonymous sign-in and Google sign-in. And as you would expect in the anonymous sign-in, we just call sign in anonymously on the service that we injected. So in the uh, in this uh, call over here, you can see we're saying sign in anonymously on the Firebase off. And then in the exact same way, we will also be doing the sign out. So pressing sign out will call sign out on the Firebase off instance. And for the sign in with Google over here. This is a little bit different. So this one uses the uh, Google sign in package. And then after the Google sign in package has been, um, you will see we, we call sign in. Then after that, um, there's a couple of additional steps that you need to do to basically um, sign in with the Google credentials. So if you're interested in the code, take a look at the GitHub repo, but you, to basically authenticate with Firebase, this is what you do. You call uh, sign in with credentials on the Firebase off and the credentials you create by calling the Google of provider, get credentials, and then you uh, supply the access token and the ID token, which you get um, by awaiting the call to authentication. And this will be that pop-up box that uh, says sign in with Google that we will see in a moment. But let's actually get a error. So in uh, on this page, you can see if we click sign in with Google, we'll get an error that says um, assertion failed. And it says that the client ID is not set. And if we go to the Google sign in package, then here you will see that they also tell you exactly what to do for Android and iOS and for web as well. Um, if I can find it, uh, the this package actually makes use of the Google sign in web dependency. So at the right here, if we click this, then you can see that um, here they give us the details how to um, basically do the web integration. And you can see that here we need to provide our uh, client ID. So this ID you can get on your uh, Firebase or in the Firebase console, or you can get it on Google Cloud. So yeah, the easiest way to get it would be if we um, well, uh, again, I also forgot we would need to enable this as well. So in our authentication page for Firebase, you can just enable this and you need to actually provide a support email. And then in the web SDK configuration, you can see that we have this web client ID. So we're going to copy paste this and this we will need to add in our index.html for the uh, web project. So index.html, and this needs to be in the uh, meta file. So I'm just gonna paste that there for now. And then in Google sign in, you can see that we need to add this meta tag. Okay, so I'm just gonna add this over here and replace this file that we have, or replace this default value. Okay, and now, um, I'm going to show you that it should be working, but we're going to be getting another error. So I want to show you the errors so that you're actually familiar with the, the errors uh, as you may encounter them when you use this. Um, I'm just going to make sure. So yeah, one thing to note is that I need to call save on this. So I'm just going to save and now Google sign in is enabled as well on the Firebase authentication side. And 
if we take a look at our running application and just do a restart, we should be getting a different error. So I'm just going to sign in with Google. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's actually pausing. So let's just continue. Okay, so platform exception, uh, initialization failed, not a valid origin for the client local host 64, blah, 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 blah. So this is important. Uh, well, not important, but you essentially need to um, tell Google. So on Google Cloud side, you need to say what origins you allow for um, your uh, Google sign-in. So for example, if this was um, my app, um, if I can type again, if this was myapp.com, again, the microphone is in my way. If this was myapp.com, then this would be, um, your the URL that you are connecting from or the domain name that you're connecting from. So you need to say, hey, I allow people to sign in with Google from uh, this domain, from this URL. So that is what we would do if we actually were connecting a domain. So if you want more information on that, you can uh, read um, these are relevant links uh, that they give over here. For our purposes, we want to do local development. And by default, we are running from localhost. The problem is with Flutter, we always get a different port that it's running on. And uh, by default, um, Google actually allows you to do um, sign in from localhost 5000. If I've, I'm pretty sure it's 5000. So in a moment, I will show you how you can configure that on Google side, how you can allow uh, different um, URLs or different domains, and then also how you can specify different ports for your local host. So um, I'm just gonna stop. And what we can do now is we can basically run our Flutter application with additional arguments to tell it what port it should use. However, that would mean we'd need to do a Flutter run from the console. So when I mean console, I mean over here. So Flutter run, and then there's some arguments that we can give. Or alternatively, um, we can uh, create a launch.json file. So this is for um, Visual Studio Code. So this generates um, this uh, .vs code directory with this launch.json. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to also add the args parameter. And um, so what this does, it basically says that when we do a Flutter run or when we say um, play, so uh, fn f5 or whatever um, then we also run it with these arguments so now if we run the app it will run it with this web host name localhost and the web port of 7000 i don't want this to be 7000 i want this to be 5000 and now if we were to run this again we should see that it is working and as i said that's because um, google allows um, that uh, Google sign-in from localhost 5000 by default when you create a new Google sign-in uh, OAuth. So, so let's bring up the console and sign in with Google. And yay, it's working. So now you can see that uh, it's not English and that's because I'm in Vietnam. So by default, it's, it's gonna show me uh, in Vietnamese. We go to English uh, US. There, there we go. So now we can sign in and it also, we, you can also set this on Google side to actually show you a different name. And if you do Firebase hosting, it actually defaults to the hosting URL you get from Firebase. But yeah, this should be working. If we do a login to our Google account, then we will go to the sign in page. Okay, the last thing that I want to show you is how you can actually set different URLs or domains for uh, the Google sign in or different local host. So the easiest way to get there, and you can just go to um, Google Cloud, is in the authentication for Google, I'm gonna go uh, click this one. So this might change by the time you watch this, but I mean, you can just uh, go to console.developers.google and then go to API credentials. So you can see that in the navigation menu, we are at API services and then credentials, okay? So API services, credentials, and this will take you here. And then in uh, this um, subdirectory over here, 
So we have this OAuth 2.0, and if we click the edit key over here, so this little pen, then that will allow us to add additional URIs um, that we will allow, or that we will tell Google to allow uh, Google sign in from. So by default, um, Firebase has added these, and I, I believe Google adds the 5,000 by default. So yeah, we're gonna add a URI. So if you have a um, actual website um, and this is running live, then you can just provide your website URL and then um, that should work. So that will allow connections from uh, that URL. Uh, what we want as not HTTPS, we wanna say localhost, for example, 7,000 or 8,000. And now I'm not gonna do this, but if we add this, um, localhost 8000 as an example then now in the um, where's that file in our launch.json we can now then also say 8000 as an example and that should work so again this is not necessary this is only if you want to do testing uh, from your local machine and yeah um, that is that for this video I hope I didn't forget anything but a fairly quick and easy way to get Firebase off and Google sign in working. Uh, if you're interested in more of this code, take a look at the GitHub URL uh, with the GitHub project. I will add that in the description for this video. And yeah, let me know if you are interested in a more architectural view about or how I use provider and how I use it in conjunction with Firebase. Um, this is just like the skeleton. I normally do a couple of extra um, steps. But yeah, if you're still here, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.